Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or oh, hi hi if you're new. My name's Kat, I'm a freelance illustrator who loves experimenting with new art supplies. So a few years ago, I started experimenting with resin and like layering it to create almost like a 3D artwork. Um, and I even made a video on it, so you can see my first attempt up here somewhere. Recently, a company called Let's Resin contacted me after seeing that video, uh, and they wanted to send me some of their resin and like resin accessory products. Uh, to try out in a new video, so here we are. So full disclosure, um, I was sent these products for free. However, I'm not being paid and um, I can give my completely non-biased, probably fairly blunt opinion on these. Uh, but also FYI, um, I'm definitely not a resin expert. Um, I have never been taught how to use resin. I'm a fly by my seat of the pants kind of girl when it comes to new art supplies. So my only knowledge is what I've gained from trial and error playing with it in my studio. So take my opinion on these products as you will. So with that out of the way, uh, let's get into the video. Um, first thing Let's Resin got me to do was jump on their Amazon store and pick out some products that I thought would be useful for this video. This is the first time I've sort of had a look at their website properly. Um, <coughs> you too. <laughs> okay, I don't actually have any proper resin accessories. Um, I just make it up as I go along. So maybe this is a good idea for me to buy. <laughs> just wipe clean using baby wipes, which I have umpteen amounts of now. Hi. That's much better than um, I've just been using one use popsicle sticks. It's probably a good idea for me to have one of these. You reckon? Not thinking so much for like working onto, though I suppose that is probably a good idea. I was more thinking to put my stuff on. What would be awesome? I don't know if they exist. If there were like silicon measure, silicon measuring cups, thing into. <laughs> I'm never gonna be able to film with like a voiceover again. <laughs> so we're gonna get some resin. Ooh. One to one ratio. That's how us non maths people like it. <laughs> cool. I probably need a couple of these to be honest. I make stuff way too big. All right. Let's see uh, what we get. Hey guys, it's a few weeks later, and I feel like I've accidentally uh, gone back to the 90s unintentionally. But my package has arrived from Let's Resin, so. I'm really excited to open this up and see what we've got because I've actually forgotten what I ordered. <laughs> so I've got two boxes. So um, this box is looking a little bit sad, but I don't think I ordered anything that could get broken. So hopefully it's all fine in here. I don't... I don't remember ordering tiny finger condoms. But that's what they look like. Teeny tiny condoms. I think they've thrown some extra stuff in here for me because I don't think I ordered these either. These look like little pouring cups. These are probably a little bit too small for what I usually use resin for, but I'm sure I can um, come up with a use for them. I didn't just drop something. Okay, these are little pipettes. I think they're childproof and I can't get into them. Um, but yeah, I think these are probably usually used for uh, if you're adding ink or some kind of pigment to your resin. Don't know if I ordered these either. No. Yes, I remember ordering these. So, I've got a couple of those, which is awesome. Yes, I remember ordering this. <laughs> so, um, I've got a big measuring or mixing cup which is in the shape of a heart that's adorable I didn't even realize that ah cute so yes that's got measurements on the side there 
So that'll be good. That's a very good size for me. And then two little measuring cups. So, oh, there's little tiny, there's little teeny tiny ones inside. This is like those um, stacking babushka dolls. So very tiny little measuring cups. So these have, I don't think you're going to be able to see these on the screen, but these have measurements on them too. So on to box two. Oh wait. What are you? I think these might be my silicon mats. Yes. So these will be pretty good. They're a bit smaller than um They're a little bit smaller than uh, what my usual workspace is, but I've got two of them. Um, that's an A4 size, and then this is an A3 size. This is probably what I'll be more likely to use under. <laughs> this is like a bit of like ASMR or whatever it's called, isn't it? Um, yeah, this will be probably about the size of most of my workspaces. So this would go under what I'm working on, and then I can put this little one under uh, all of my... Uh, mixing cups and all that sort of thing. So everything will be safe and not resined. Okay, box two. So this is the um, Let's Resin branded resin. So we've got the epoxy and that's the resin part and then B which is the hardener. I'm really excited to get started on this. I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do um, and I've got some fun stuff to play with. I'm going to keep this portion of the video relatively short uh, just because um, this is more about the products I'm using and not the process I'm going through. I do have all of this recorded so I might do a more detailed video on it in the future. If you guys are interested in that let me know down below. I decided to read the instructions just to make sure they weren't super different from any other resin that I've used and I actually got a little bit confused because the translation from I think they're Japanese to English has been just a little bit off. After pouring out the resin A and B please stir them gently in one direction until it won't wire drawing. Wire drawing? wire drawing. I just can't think of what wire drawing could be. I googled it just to see if there was some lack of knowledge there on my part but I, I cannot work out what wire drawing is supposed to be. So I ended up doing what I've just always done with resin which is making sure I have equal parts of A and B and mix them together for two minutes straight. At the moment I'm adding some dark stuff down the bottom uh, which will serve as a background for the lighter things that I'm going to be painting a few layers above. So this is some dirt that I collected the next day. It usually takes about 24 hours for resin to fully dry so this is the next day and I'm just testing out how well I can just peel off the leftover resin from my mixing cups and it's actually amazing. As for the resin itself, I'm actually really surprised at how clear it is. I didn't use a heat gun or anything to get rid of bubbles. I can't see any bubbles. Now I'm using um, a powdered pigment called Perlex. Uh, this one is in the color mink. Um, I really love using this with resin. You've got to use it very sparingly though or it can really overpower it if you're wanting to have a transparency still. I really like this one for this project because at different angles it's either like a pinky brown or it's a green that's very similar to what a cicada is. Then I'm going to go ahead and start adding my flora and fauna. Uh, I'm just putting them on top of the wet layer and pushing them into it. Previously I've gone the other way and glued them down and then poured the resin on top but I found that can lead to bubbles coming up when it's uh, halfway through drying so I'm going to try this method this time. I'm also going to add a few gold flakes just for a little bit of, you know, colour and light within the layers. Tomorrow. Really happy with how the Perlex has turned out. And now I'm going to go in and start painting my outlines with Holbein Acrylic Gouache. Uh, this is my new favourite medium. Um, I'm still learning how to use it, so this is a test run to see if it works in resin. I just really love the colours that they come in and just the effects that they have when I'm painting with them, so I'm interested to see how it goes in the resin. The very next evening. Here I'm painting with very watered down gouache, and then I'm going to start patting it off so it becomes a very light misty layer. Just so when I paint the wings in, it's going to be just a little bit more obvious what they are because there's such a busy background happening. And now it's time to finally use my cicada wing. So I'm just going to place him down next to where the other wing is going to be just so I have a bit of a reference as to what I'm painting on the other side and I'm going to copy that one down. And I've already lost count but I think this is layer 4 of resin. I'm going to add half of that layer down first. I'm going to place the wing on top and make sure it's in the correct spot. 
I'm then going to use some sewing pins just to make sure it stays put because often with the putting objects in resin, as it dries, they tend to move a little bit. Early the next morning. So if you end up using the same method as me with the pins, you can remove them. It takes a little bit of oomph, but they do come out nice. They will leave a little bit of a, a divot where they were sitting in the resin. Um, if you just do another layer on top of that, then you won't notice it at all. And I actually decided to leave one of the pins in because it reminds me a little bit of taxidermied insects. And I thought that was a really cool idea. And when I do the next layer of resin, I'll make sure to put it all over the top of it just to try and make sure that it's nice and sealed and stuck in there. Uh. And here's the finished product. As usual, it's really, really difficult to show you on camera uh, exactly what it looks like in real life, especially with all the layers and um, everything that's going on. This one in particular, because it's in crystal, it's got an amazing element that I wasn't expecting, which is sort of light coming in at all different layers. So I'm really, really pleased with it. And um, I think I'm gonna be using crystal and glass in the future for more resin projects. So I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I've been holding onto the cicada wing for like two years, I think at this point. So it's been really great to work out what I actually wanted to use it for. So what do I actually think of the Let's Resin product? Um, I do really like the resin. Um, it's, it's really clear and when I've put objects in it, like they're very crisp. Um, it was actually good that I ended up using like a crystal because I could actually see through it from the bottom and the sides as well. And I could see that it's actually a very nice crisp resin. Usually I use a heat gun uh, when I'm doing resin just to get rid of all the bubbles before it fully sets. Um, and I didn't have to do that with this one. I did try it on one of the layers and it didn't make any difference. My only complaints with the resin really um, are the English instructions on the back uh, with that mistranslation. It's a little bit unclear what they want you to do. Um, so if I didn't, if I hadn't used resin before this, um, I probably would have not really had any idea what they're actually telling me to do with it. It'd also be really lovely to be able to get it in like a bigger size. Um, I often do much bigger resin work, so it'd be good to be able to buy like just a larger size rather than having to buy two or three sets of bottles. Um, the resin accessories were really, really great. Uh, whether that's because of the brand or just because like I never used resin accessories before, um, who knows? Um, the, the Let's Resin ones, they're fantastic. So usually I would use like plastic, throw away plastic cups and um, like throw away plastic shot glasses and wooden popsicle sticks and stuff. and. Um, Every, you just can't reuse them basically because the resin gets stuck on them, you can't remove it. So all of the silicon stuff was really, really good um, for all of that, especially the uh, placemat because I often get little drops of resin on my desk. And I use this for drawing too, so I spend half my time trying to raise a blade, drops of resin off, and there are definitely still little droplets on this desk um, that get very annoying if I need a flat space to draw on. I didn't get a chance to use any of these though. Um, I can definitely see them coming in handy, especially this big, this big one. I would and will absolutely use this when I'm doing bigger resin stuff. I still didn't work out what to use the tiny finger condoms for, though. So honestly, all up, I'm pretty happy with the products. Um, I can't vouch for if they're getting yellow over time. That's something I'm going to have to keep an eye out on. But I think they're going to be my go-to resin brand for the future. I think what I'll do is I'll pass off the remaining resin that I've got to my friend Steph at um, Fallen Into Fantasy. She does really amazing resin jewelry. And um, I'm pretty sure she knows a little bit more about resin than I do. So I'll pass it off to her. And if she's got any comments or critiques or anything like that, I'll add them in the uh, description down below in the comments. Um, just to let you guys know if there's, you know, anything that I missed as a, I don't know how to resin person. Um, also if I do notice it yellowing over the next months and years, I'll also mention that down below. Just so if you come back to this video, um, or if you've just found me and it's like a few years time, you'll be able to know whether it's still a great product, uh, over time. So thank you so much to Let's Resin for collaborating with me. It's been really great to have just a little bit of a push to get back into resin since I had the tiny human. If you're interested in checking out any of their products, you can find them at www.amazon.com slash Let's Resin. And if you want to find any more of my work, uh, you can find me on 
all of the social medias on your screen right now. I'll also list them in the description down below. Um, and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know to do more stuff like this. And if you want to check out any more of my videos, because as you see, I did write, do more resin. I do lots of other stuff. Uh, you can check those out. And if you like those, it'd be great if you'd want to subscribe. Because we'd love to have you here. Um, I think that's it for this video. If you guys have any resin stuff that you've done, I would love to see it. So please link me, send it to me. Somehow get the link to me so I can see it because I would love to. Um, or just describe it. Tell me about your experience with resin in the comments down below. Um, yeah, and I guess that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!